Greetings, citizens, and welcome to another all-new edition of Reverse the Verse Live, now with the power of Color Safe Bleached for improved stain fighting power. I'm your host, content manager, Jared Huckabee. You laughed in rehearsal. Where were you? I'm laughing now. On the show this week, we have a collection of designers and programmers from Chad McKinney and Michael Dillon here in our Los Angeles studio to Rob Reiner, Rob Reiniger, who's going to be calling in from our offices in Austin, Texas. It'll be your one-stop shop for questions and answers about this important new gameplay system central to what will make much of Star Citizen a living, breathing universe. But before we get to that, let's go ahead and do a little thing I like to call the Week in Review. Now, last week, we had Paul Jones and Quarantine Billamont, as well as Matt Sherman here, to discuss the recently revealed Hercules Starlifter and its role in the Star Citizen universe. Now, combined with the ATV segment from the day before, they're both a fantastic look at the development of this exciting new ship from Crusader Industries. And I've never done this with two people just staring at me. And before we get too far ahead, remember that the full concept promotion, with all the CCUs and everything that entails, will be open for all Star Citizens later today if they don't actually go live during this broadcast. Also on Friday, we had our first ever concierge dinner party here in the Los Angeles studio. It was a great chance to meet up with our backers, host a private Q&A, enjoy a fantastic dinner, and really just have an intimate and unique experience. Now, if you want to see a little of what went on during that thing, I encourage you to check out social media because my Twitter feed has been full of pictures from the event all week. Monday brought with another informative episode of Calling All Devs. This time with discussions on Weapons System 2.0, uh, the Galactopedia, and all things related to flight control like the F IFCS, uh, Atmospheric Flight, ESP, and GravLev. If you haven't seen it yet, it and all 16 previous episodes of Calling All Devs are available now up on YouTube. Tuesday was Laura Day, and this week's post featured the very first part in a brand new subscriber exclusive series called Hostile, Negoti Hostile Negotiations, featuring an adventure on Crusader, one of the planets I'm most looking forward to in the Star Citizen universe. Now you can find that story up now on the robertspaceindustries.com website. Wednesday, several members of the events, marketing, community, player relations teams, and more, really, went on our very first site visit to the Long Center in Austin, Texas, site of this year's CitizenCon 2948. For those of you who were around to witness last year's enormous event, this year's has the capacity four times larger than any previous gathering of Star Citizens, and it promises to be our biggest and baddest event yet to date. So if you don't have your tickets, they're available now on that very same robertspaceindustries.com website. Then Thursday saw the release of another episode of Around the Verse, Star Citizen's flagship broadcast, where you can find all the latest details on our continuing development, including an in-depth feature on the service beacon system. And when we return, we'll be sitting down with some of the developers who worked to bring that very first iteration of service beacons to life. So stay tuned. We'll be right back.
if you can give me like a 30 second heads up. Oh, we're up. <laughs> There's no such thing as Wait. a 30 seconds heads up. That was Moons by Tarada. And I, I, I will freely admit that I have watched that video uh, a number of times in the last uh, uh, couple of days. Uh, I, it, it's, it's, I mean, it speaks for itself. That's why I, I, that's why I had to include it. Joining us on the show today, we've got service beacon people. Service beacon people. In our very, we, we had to figure out how to squeeze everybody in from multiple studios. This is our solution here. Thank you guys for, for joining us. Thank you for yeah, having no me. Thank you. Now, because every single show is somebody's first show, you know, we're getting new star citizens every day. Uh, I saw a post the other day that was like, what other shows do they do besides Around the Verse? And somebody listed all the shows and I'm like, wow, I didn't know any of those others existed. And I checked, the guy's been here since like 2014. And I was like, I'm not doing so because this is this is always somebody's first show. Let's take a few minutes and introduce yourselves and uh, what your title is and what you do for Star Citizen. Uh, we will start immediately to my left with uh, Chad. Hi, I'm Chad McKinney. I'm a lead gameplay engineer here in the LA studio, and um, yeah, work on gameplay features uh, these days. Working on obviously service beacons, but also a lot of quantum travel for the next release. Yeah. All right. And Michael? Uh, hi, I'm Michael Dillon, also a gameplay engineer here in the LA studio and doing very similar work to what Chad's doing. So working on the quantum drive and service beacon stuff. All right. And joining us live via teleconference from Austin, Texas, Rob, hey. who are you and what do you do? Uh, my name is Rob Reininger. I'm a lead system designer in Austin, Texas. Uh, we're responsible for you know shopping and service beacon, doing some quantum travel stuff with these guys now. So uh, that's about it. Yeah. The economy, you know. Right. Small, small thing called economy. <laughs> small thing, you know. It's, <laughs> I don't know. We've gone around this long without it. Do we really need it? Uh, yeah, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, you're a designer. You, you gentlemen are engineers. Uh, just so folks know what kind of questions they can submit and whatnot. Uh, what is the difference between a designer and engineer as far as service beacons go? How, how does this uh, how does this work? So designers are the guys that are coming up with all the work for these guys to do, really, and making yeah. these guys' lives hard. Uh, we come up Basically. with the system, yep. how we want it to work, the, the rule set behind it, um, you know, the, the conditions that we want the, the system to operate in, and then we ask these guys to go and implement it in the, the game code, <laughs> back-end services, and, and then they give it back to us for us to kind of tune and, uh, and make it all kind of work at the end of the day, right. so. An important part of that process is where we tell you that you're actually wrong about something. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> that, that may happen, yeah. And say the, the, uh, the relationship between uh, engineers and programmers and designers is, is, is a fascinating one. Yeah. Through, you know, I, I've been doing this for a little over three, three years now and just, and just watching the, not only the way that you guys interact when we're not on camera, but then the way you guys interact. And then it's like, it's like what does he do? What does he want me to do? This can't be done. It's like, well, this, and then it, it, it's, it's interesting the way that you guys push each other. And it, Usually, I, this design is you know, <laughs> some crazy what, stuff. Words together. we can't use. Yes, the designer's, like, this, the designer's like, this should be easy. It's like, I got it right here on paper. It, it's just, just make this. Just put this in the game. <laughs> So no, it's 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 one of my favorite aspects is seeing the way that you guys you guys push each other. Mm -hmm. So today's show is about service beacons, and if you didn't, if you haven't watched ATV from yesterday, we had a wonderful feature that went into all kinds of depth that had these three fine gentlemen as well as Tony Zurabek and others. Um, just in case somebody, you know, because it's only been out for 24 hours, uh, just in case somebody hasn't watched uh, the ATV yet, uh, they don't know. Let, let's let's do the nickel version. What is the service beacon system? Dime store version. So service beacon system is a player generated mission system, essentially. So uh, we've got the framework of it in. There's only a couple beacon types right now, but it allows players to create content for each other, uh, which allows them to, you know, create form alliances or, you know, friendship bonds. It brings people together in what is an incredibly large universe. So uh, that's, that's the two cent version. Well, I asked for the 10 cent version. What else you got? Oh, oh my, my bad. Uh, so <laughs> he's a cheap dude. It, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, uh, it allows them to, to set their own reward price, um, dictate the conditions of, of the contract, uh, although there's you know very few options right now. We look to expand that. Um, the players are going to be able to filter you know, the, the beacons that they're you know, notified about. The, um, these are all things that are, are intended for the system at the end of the day. So it's, it's, it, it's going to be something where you shouldn't really be able to tell the difference between, you know, player generated content versus, you know, the content that, that we create. We really want it to just feel like it's another contract out there. It's another thing that you can go and do. And uh, eventually we, we'd like to have NPCs to be able to respond to these as well. So if your beacon's up and it's for a reasonable price, nobody's responding, mm -hmm. we, we'd like for the an NPC to come and, and help you out. So 
Yeah, just to like kind of drive home that original point there. Uh, for me, I think the service beacons are actually really important, and they actually make the game more like what I want Star Citizen to be. Uh, it it brings a, a, an amount of interaction with the players that you don't get in other games. You see these other games, and it they, yeah, they have lots of people in the game, but a lot of times you're basically playing a single player experience yeah. alongside each other with a lot of people online. And you just look at this and you think to yourself, there's so much that can be done with this that you just leave on the table. It's you don't get it utilized at all. And I think. The service beacons are a really good solution to getting the players to play together and to make content for each other and make unique situations that can't be scripted, couldn't be dreamt up by you know some uh, mission system or whatever. So I think it's actually going to be a pretty uh, fundamental part of what makes Star Citizen a, a special game. Okay. Yeah, that's, ab that's about eight cents worth. What you got, Michael? <laughs> Make uh, up the last two. <laughs> the last two, I agree pretty much everything uh, both of them said. It's what Chad said. I think this really pulls away for players to you know interact with other players and build that uh on that not necessarily economy but that social uh envelope that goes on there with all of that so you know you learn oh these players are really good you start building those bonds in the game or enemies in the game if certain things happen mm -hmm. um but yeah it starts building out from being just you know okay i'm flying my ship through space to i'm in this environment with other living people and you get this more uh, dynamic interaction so all right, so we are taking questions uh, live from the chat. You can submit your questions if you're a live viewer in two places. You can submit them in Twitch chat, where we're broadcasting now. You can su uh, submit your question, preface with the word question in capital letters, surrounded by brackets. It's going to help uh, our good friend uh, Tyler Wicken pull them out of the chat. You can also submit your questions in Spectrum General, which is our bespoke communication platform up on robertspaceindustries.com. In addition, for folks who couldn't be here with us, we put a thread up in Spectrum yesterday where we, collect que we collected questions over the last 24 hours. And and allowed people to vote on which ones they wanted to see us address most. So right off the bat, the, the, the questions are coming in right now. Like T Tyler is blowing up right now. He literally just said, "So many are good questions." So you guys are doing great. We're going to start with one of the with the one that was voted up the most, though. Just, just get it out of the way. Uh, it says, "What mechanism will prevent abuse from the person putting out a service beacon?" For example. I ask for an escort through an area where I have friends setting up an ambush for us. They, not me, disable him and salvage his ship for profit. Now, I don't have to pay for a successful escort attempt. The person who took up the contract is out money in his ship, and my friends have a ship and spare parts to sell. Is that working as intended? Is that, what's the deal there? That, that's a collaborative effort that I don't know how you protect against. I mean, if... <laughs> There is a rating system that is, is part of this. So if, if this is a consistent thing that, that keeps happening, uh, eventually these people will get weeded out. And um, you know, if, if you only want a four-star rated or a five-star rated person to escort you, then clearly they have a reputation for getting you to the other side safely or, or performing the service that you're asking for uh, to, to a high you know, level of completions. Um, so I, I think that the rating system will be a, a big part of filtering that out. I, I, it's hard to imagine a rule set that we could program to uh, prevent something like that. Although we're, we're definitely going to try and do our best to catch as many of these edge cases as possible. Um, but the it's that's a that's a really you know complex situation. To, I, th to I think what I would give as a counter argument is like, yes, I think that the, the rating system does help weed that out and smooth out those experiences, but I think it's actually important that we don't remove them because I think it's actually yeah. a very interesting part of it that it's not, you're not guaranteed. This is, you're dealing with actual people and in space, yep. when you're dealing with actual people, there's always that little bit of danger. How much do you know this person? Can you trust them? If you just get picked up by a random person, yeah, there's a little bit of a social contract there, mm -hmm. but that's not a guarantee. And I think that's actually an interesting part of the experience. You have those guarantees whenever you engage with the mission content. You know, it's not, it's gonna, now, yeah, you might get ambushed, but it'll be part of the mission. With this, like, yes, you know that the person has a particular rating, so more than likely, you're gonna get, you know, an experience that you expect, but you will have times when you'll be surprised, and I think that's actually a good thing. Yeah, it'll, it'll, beco it'll become interesting as, it's one of those things that kind of, adjusts itself over time yep. as players begin to build reputation you know in the world not not just the star system because the the, 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 the star rating i think will, will be a great 
first step. Yep. But you know, yep. you're, you're going to start to learn names. You're going to yes. start. You're, you're or you're going to be. You're going to start asking. Hey, has anybody taken a mission from Chad before? He's got a four star rating right now. You know, so so you know, I don't know if that was somebody who trolled the rating, right. or if that, or if that, or or if he's you know genuinely right. a jerk. Maybe they're but, in a rival org. Exactly. You know, you know yeah. working with your org mates, work, working with you know yeah, your your friends who are maybe in other orgs, and and just building up a rep, just like in real life. I, I, I think that's the big part of that. It also allows you to build up the idea of this, uh, <clears throat> I'd say like this economy aspect to it. Because if you're known for being reliable for escorting people, you can charge a little extra for that. Because, hey, you know yep. I'm going to be good for this versus, oh, I'm kind of broke and I need help. Well, I'll take someone that might be a risk. So you kind of build this. Yeah. The longer you do it as a provider, you start going, okay, I'm, I'm proving I can do this. I'm building a reputation and that reputation can have monetary impact. So. Yeah. You make a great point there that, that as you build your reputation, even beyond the five, even the, the star rating is where that starts. But as you mm -hmm. build your reputation, that ability for you to charge more, that ability for you, it's like, Hey, I've got a proven record. I've got mm -hmm. an org that backs me up. You know, when I'm involved, you know, the, 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 that stuff's on the fly. It's like that. That's going to be, uh, it's going to be critical. For, for combating yeah. the kind of thing uh, that, that this person is talking about. Uh, there's a follow-up question here. It's, a, it's from another backer, but I think it's a good, a, a good follow-up here. What reasons would there be for people to not just take missions from five stars? Like, like why, why would you choose to take a mission from a four-star person or a three-star person? Maybe well, it's – sorry. Oh, go, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, you. I, I was just going to say it, it's going to be hard to maintain that five-star rating. So – the the well, rating I have, I have back end access, so I'll just hack it. <laughs> <laughs> Hard for um, the, the ratings will will constantly be trying to normalize down to a, a, a zeroed out level. So if you're not consistently performing these actions and and getting rated uh, highly for for your service, you're not going to be a five star person. So when you put a contract up, you need to be really careful. It's like, oh, that how many people are in a, with the five star rating that are in my area or even willing to, to take this job at this time, right? So um, it's it's going to be a little bit of a balancing act for the players to kind of figure out like, hmm, do it? Do I put this up, you know, and only require a higher level, or do I want to maybe open up the field a little bit to maybe a little bit of that trolling uh, for the sake of of having more opportunity for people to provide this service? Um, but that's 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 up for the player to to balance if if they want to maybe not get their their service or be escorted or picked up or delivered or whatever for a while right it might take a while for somebody with that rating to, to come through like that's that's up to them and so that's where they just get to decide how they want to deal with it but okay. i agree with chad's point like it's uh it's up to the players to kind of figure this out and, and it's part of the game it's part of the fun to uh a living, breathing choose, universe. Choose how you deal with it, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to ask you right now uh, to, to gently push that reclaimer a little off. You, you've almost waved and hit it a couple times. And, <laughs> and if you were, it just, it's just, it's taken enough abuse from Tyler. So thank you. <laughs> just want to keep it safe. Uh, you could also just ship it here yeah, if you want. If you right just want to ship desk. it here, it would be very safe here. <laughs> thank you. Uh, questions from the live chat here. Um, d uh, is it possible to make emergency beacons that don't cost any money to create? Like medical support, refuel, repair, something like calling nine one one. Actually, that's something that we're looking at for. Um, to one of the things that we're looking at next. I'm not saying that's necessarily going to go into the next release or not, but uh, Thanks, distress beacons are something that we're very interested in. And in fact, whenever we first started working on the feature, it was always part of the discussion that there would be some way that you could fire up some distress call and get help. And it's not necessarily that there's a price associated with it, though there could be. Um, but it's just say, hey, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I just got ambushed or whatever. Like there's some quick, maybe a hotkey, maybe an interaction that you can just automatically throw it up. And if somebody's nearby, they'll get the notification, they can go help you. It's, it's just a way of saying, hey, I need help. And if someone wants to be kind, they can, yeah. but, but maybe they're a pirate. So. Yeah. yeah. Maybe they come help the other side. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel like, I feel like, uh, and I, I understand one of the reasons why we haven't decided one way or the other, what's good, because there are advantages and disadvantages to having it cost something. If, 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 if you have a, if you have a distress beacon cost something, then you cut down on abuse. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's it, for, for the fake calls. The fake calls are going to cost that mm -hmm. person something to make yeah. the fake calls. If they're all just free willy nilly, then you, then you can have people spamming and just setting traps for free with, with no recourse to themselves. Right. So yeah. it's definitely an interesting thing that would need to be explored and continue to mull sure. over. Uh, although 
they're going to be a service beacon like any other, so they will have a reputational um, feedback associated with yep. them. So if somebody like they can't just keep doing it, maybe maybe they'll they'll do it a couple times and and they'll get it. But if they keep doing that, they're going to get a reputation for it. So. And and there is also whatever criminal, ah, you yes. know, rating that you're going to get because of the actions that you do, right? So you trap somebody, you take their ship, you steal from them, you kill them, you whatever. Like that's all those things are going to eventually have some sort of you know criminal rating associated with it that that just builds up and you get bounties you get uh you know potentially thrown in jail someday right like that's um those are all not without uh outside of the the realm of reason of of the universe so there there's consequences to your actions and some people are going to be okay with with being a pirate and being that guy, but uh, they're going to be hunted. They're going to be, you know, highly sought after. They're not going to be able to fly in in UE space. Like, uh, there's going to be consequences to those right. actions. So, but again, we don't want to like completely remove like piracy yeah. from the game. Like that's that's part of the yeah, game. Is space isn't safe. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, it, it's Chris has long maintained uh, a, a risk versus reward yes. thing. Yep. It, it's, it's he, uh, we, we had the, uh, we talked about the uh, concierge uh, dinner party on this Friday and uh, uh, the folks who came got to all submit one question ahead of time and we did a whole Q&A stuff and there were quite a few questions about piracy in that. And uh, you, you, you see Chris's eyes light up when he, when he, when he talks about privacy. It, it, it's, it's, or piracy. It's one of those things, it's, it's, it, you have to make the system, you have to make how everything is supposed to work. Before you can go and make how you're supposed to be able to exploit it, exploit it. So I, I think I think I think he and a lot of folks here are are, are just as anxious as our backers and our viewers are uh, to, to to develop the how things are supposed to work so that we can start getting to the point where like now how can people subvert that and stuff. It, it's it's going to be an exciting time. And uh, I think a lot of the ways that they're going to be able to get around that stuff is just going to come you know naturally through the the gameplay, right? It's mm -hmm. we're going to build it a certain way and and they're going to find their ways around it and, and to cause their havoc if that's what they're interested in. So it's it's going to be fun to see how they, they kind of exploit those things. I really thought you were going, it will come naturally because people are terrible. I thought that's where you were going. <laughs> well, that's, that goes without what? saying. <laughs> uh, um, will, from the live chat here, will players be able to request transportation of one of their ships via service beacon? Now, I, now does that mean, I, there's not detail, I don't know if that person mean come and fly my ship to some place or come load my ship up inside your you know cargo bay i don't know which or my one ship is on one planet i want you to take it to me yeah like, i don't know if, i don't know yeah. if the question means means come board my ship and and and, and fly it for me or mm -hmm. load it up i don't know well uh, uh, those are some things that we've talked about quite a bit originally when when tony zervek first came on board uh several years ago like that we want people to be able to, you know, hey, I want you to take this cargo from, you know, this planet to this planet. And I fronted the money for it and I need somebody to take it out there. And ships are not outside of that. They're going to be pinned to a spaceport somewhere. So, you know, you're going to be at this planet. You want to get this ship over here. How do you how do you do that without, you know, constantly ferrying your own stuff around? You're going to need somebody else to fly it, somebody you trust or somebody that is known for doing a good job at that. So I, I think that's absolutely going to be something at some point. Another question from the live chat. Uh, a, a very common feature in most MMOs is the ability to open up a trade window and just give somebody something. It's like, here, here's here's 10,000 credits and here's a roll of wool and, and, and silk or whatnot. Uh, now we've talked in the past through calling all devs one up that the service beacon system is our way uh, to do that. Uh, this person is asking, will it be possible to just open up a trade service beacon? Like, like, like hey, I'm just trying to give you things. I don't need you to go and fly anywhere. I don't need you to go and do anything. I'm just trying to give you this stuff. Is, is that something that we're looking at, I, talking about? I, I, we've, at least within the design team, we, we've been talking about some sort of trade window, trade mechanism where players can do exactly that. So um, the service beacon is the first thing in the game where players are allowed to trade services or, or money. Uh, but th this is just the beginning of, of yeah. this type of feature. So it's definitely coming i'm not sure when that's slated but it's it's actively being talked about in the I design mean, group you can 
kind of already do this. So like if you throw up a combat assist beacon right now, uh, you can just pay someone and there's no end to it until either side cancels the contract. So if you want to give just money to somebody, they can accept it and then you can just pay them however much money over the period of time. Um, that said, if you want to give a fixed amount to a particular person guaranteed, uh, this isn't the right methodology for it. The service beacons are broadcast and you can filter that down, but it's not really, I think, so much uh, directed, at least yet. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think maybe something like a trade, uh, like a, a, a more formal like trade uh, experience makes more sense for, for exactly yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. possibly expanded beyond just credits. What if, what if, mm -hmm. what if I wanted to pay somebody in al aluminum? Like I, sure. I, I am just the aluminum magnate of the Crusader system, and I and I've got I've got a million you know units here, and I just want to pay somebody in aluminum instead of my credits. Will, will I will will I be able to offer rewards other than just That's credits for these missions? Uh, you know we haven't really talked about no, that. We uh, yeah. uh, it's it, technically it's possible. possible. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's not outside the realm of reason. Um, we're we're dealing mostly with you or primarily with UEC or, or Alpha Currency right now, just because that's that's what's in the player's wallet yes, and yes. that's that's how we do the transactions. But once we get the, the trade system uh, where, where players can open up trade windows and stuff in, there, there's no reason why we couldn't expand like, hey, I'm, you know, take me here and I'll give you a thousand of my, you know, units of whatever, like that's... Yeah, because yeah, it, it, it makes sense to me that at some point down uh, right now, you, you know, it makes sense to keep it to Alpha UEC because we're we're you know we're attempting to fine tune you know those things you know how much UEC is really worth in the galaxy. We mm -hmm. we want the testing to be there, but it makes sense to to me at least that it, that at some point you're going to want to be able to like 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 offer you know here are components you know here, here's my personally tuned component and, and whoever you know does this for me i'm going to pay you in goods it, you know right. as, as far as you and know as the biggest as thing we have there is becomes system. our interfacing how do we provide yeah. that to the that becomes a right. big part yeah. of it. well i think the tangible experience is interesting um but in the game we're trying to reduce as much like hand wavy magic right mm -hmm. so where is this gold and how how do you give it yeah. to them yeah like normally whenever you have a commodity it's in your cargo grid so it's yeah. a physical thing and then now i want you to take me somewhere and i give you gold how does it end up like how do you get it yeah like like like, like, like you have like you have to store stuff in a bank and you only do bank to bank transfer kind of thing yeah maybe something like, like that like or maybe you, you have bank. to have the other ship and it gets transferred well, or they both get taken to atc I, I don't know. I, CR's always been really big on on the tangible nature of it, and he wants to see cargo being moved from one thing to another. So, once we get like the tractor beam in, uh, which mining is kind of the first, you know, implementation of that, um, you know, the, the cargo mover is not going to be far off. So you'll be able to get your your paw tool and move some boxes or or hand carry them uh, to somebody else's ship, assuming that it's a good that can be uh, moved that way. Um, and then items are probably not too far behind that uh, with just being able to physically move them. But yeah. I can almost guarantee that CR is probably going to be interested in that item being physically there uh, yeah, for the trade to happen. Gotcha. Yeah, this is a good time to remind everybody that we are we, we are exploring an idea yes. right here. Yeah, yeah, uh, yes. You know, we, we, said it, we, said it, we said it at the beginning. I want to reiterate it at the end. Right now, the service beacon system as it's being developed, and we're only still in the, the earliest iterations of it. Yes. You know, it's yeah, strictly right. an alpha UEC thing. You know, we're still building up the types of missions and the types of things you can do. Uh, we are we are we are been discussing the idea of expanding it to other commodities and items, but this is by no means confirmed. It's it's just something we all agree. You no. know, it seems like a good idea and stuff. And, and, and so when we have more to say in that regard, you can be sure that you'll see it on either Around the Verse or Calling All Devs or, you know, in a later episode here. But right now, that was just a discussion. Just, <laughs> just for clarity's sake. Just for clarity's sake. Um, this question came up a couple times, so I'm going to combine them. Uh, is there any phenomena that would interfere with the broadcast of a service beacon. We got one question that mentions electronic warfare, one question that mentions uh, uh, like uh, environmental phenomena like nebulas or you know a surface side phenomena like a sandstorm. Maybe a service beacon can't broadcast through the heaviest storm on whatever. Uh, have we, has there been any talk about things that could inhibit the ability of a service beacon to do its job? Uh I've always kind of liked the idea of, of having the comma rays be something that can help carry the signal or, or boost its range or um, 
if you go out into into dead space out on the outer rim or something, you're outside the comm areas. So your comms in the ship need to physically reach, you know, the distance that they cover. Um, otherwise, if you're within the comm network, then you're you can pretty much send it as far as the the comm rays can can broadcast. But uh, we haven't fully you know figured out exactly how the the transfer of information or or um, that that signal is going to be transmitted through the system yet but that's that's kind of how i see it you know working at the end of the day and and going from system to system like do you really want to send a service beacon message to someone three systems away is that really a beneficial thing so um it depends on what it is and and you know we, we just have to play around with it and really yeah. find kind of that, that cool middle ground yeah because it'll be interesting because you mentioned the service beacons and what instantly came to mind is the uh, the the old uh 2.0 gameplay of going around and disabling uh the uh, the, the comm rays mm -hmm. the comm rays and and, and whether exactly. and whether yeah. a, a, an assaulting force you know might go around and disable the comm rays that are surrounding a particular moon when up before going down and raiding somebody's you know homestead and so it's, well, it's, it's what i would do yeah. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Like, I, and I thought about this uh, just as far as the economy info and like, how do I get or understand what the prices are on a different planet? Well, I, I would like that information to be transmitted through the comma rays so that, you know, if somebody goes and takes that down, then all of a sudden the, the Herald has a really important role, which is like bridging the gaps between these communication breaks uh, in the network. So it's um, trying to make sure that we've, we've got a purpose for all these things is uh, really it's it's on my mind quite a bit yeah. um and and i think that's really interesting as a player too for an information runner or for yeah yeah there's a herald out there and he's he's allowing service beacons to go through or you know the economy info or yeah. you know just missions or distress calls or whatever like I, I think that's i think that would be really neat for the players um but that's that's how i envision that kind of working i mean for me i, I think it goes back to what i was saying earlier which is this is the kind of thing that drives the players together. And whether that's yeah. in col collaboration or in opposition, it's, it's making the environment much more interesting and dynamic. If we're making service beacon um, distribution tied in some way to some physical element in the game, then that means that that's something that can be attacked. And that means that now we have this interesting um, kind of interplay between the player base. Uh, so yeah, I think I love that idea. I, I, I'm, really hope that at some point we do get around to doing that kind of stuff. I think it'll be really cool gameplay. It also builds on that okay. if, if that data can be stopped, then that data can gain value. Yep. Because if yep. it's you know not guaranteed that that's getting everywhere, but I can guarantee that, now I've got a service I can make money doing. Yeah. So. Uh, now, important uh, modifier there, you, you said if it becomes physical. Again, just <laughs> for the just for the folks who write up the summaries and for the <laughs> folks that read the summaries and don't watch the full thing, don't miss the context. We're, we're exploring the idea of making it physical, guys. Because a couple of the questions we're asking, uh, if the service beacon itself would become a physical right. item. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and have we made a decision in that regard yet? If, if, at least if the beacon itself would become a physical item? No, I don't know of any plans. I mean, to me, it's it's something that you're using your comm equipment. Like just, you know, lore-wise, like I envision this as like, yeah, it's like me turning on my radio. It's it's Yeah. You know, Your there's a receiver for it, or, or yeah, it's it's a Moby Glass, or it's part of the ship, you know, communication uh, hardware, right? It, it's um, it's the future, right? And people have the ability to send, you know, communications through the, their way. But to me, what the the physicalized part is, you know, the how they the the comma rays or the or whatever whatever you know to be. Mm -hmm. amplifies that signal through space, right? right? Yeah. Now, as a as a gameplay programmer, I I I think that we could maybe do more to make the that experience more interesting if we were interested in that. So like we could fire off like a, an effect and maybe like some cool sound, stuff like that. And maybe when you accept something, just, you know, make it more fun. Uh, sure, yeah. But, you know, that's, but still keeping it virtual, like communication based, but, you know, make it more of a, an exciting thing when yeah. one gets fired off or accepted or you receive one, something like that. Yeah. And maybe a notification uh, on your end when the signal is not getting through like like if it does become physicalized and somebody does shut down the comm links or you know the comm arrays or whatever some yeah. notification to you so that you're not just sitting there <laughs> <laughs> or if your signal's being jammed or yeah exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. yeah absolutely you're gonna Lone want that star. <laughs> um we've got a couple questions here uh that all go towards the filtering 
of who can accept yes. your service beacons. Uh, we've got folks, folks asking if they could uh, set a service beacon that can only be seen by their org mates. Uh, if they can send a service beacon that can only be set to some kind of list of preferred contractors, or if they can set service beacons that can only be accepted by five star and four star people. Have we, have we done, have we had any conversations about filtering who can, allowing people to filter who can actually accept their missions? I mean, yeah, there's... Uh, we, that's 100% part of the plan. Um, Right now, the, the options that the players have are, are extremely limited because we're putting in the foundation for the, the system to actually work. But who can see it, um, whether it's your friends list or your org mates or, um, you know, we've already got the reputation stuff in. Um, you're going to have the ability to kind of customize, you know, the, the range on it. You know, I only want people that are really close to me or I, I only want people um, that that I know or good ratings or it's it's definitely in the in the future um yeah i mean so, you can already uh, do some filtering based on the the star rating when you deploy it so it's it's obviously something we've thought about uh also going from the other direction is something that we plan on um pro oh, we yeah it's something that we've been talking about so not just that i can say who can receive it but also i can say who like what i see so right now it's pretty like kind of broadcast all you send it everybody gets it and it, that's a little, it, that could be potentially noisy depending on how many people engage with the feature. So um, we could add filtering options to it where you can say, I'm personally only interested in combat assistance even if I meet all the requirements who somebody who uh, broadcasts a combat assistance uh, beacon is specifying. Uh, and I think that will be good on both sides of it so that like I'm not spamming people whenever I make a beacon that don't really care about it. And yeah. for my player experience, if there are certain parts of it or all of it that I'm not really interested in, I can make my experience um, the one that I want to have. So okay. uh, we got a question in the live chat. Uh, is service beacons uh, the way the intended way for us to find crewmates? Is, is that how we're going to recruit crewmates, pay them at the end of a mission? Is, is, is the service beacons the, 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 the first start of that? Uh, it wasn't really intended to be that. Um, we, we want you to, you know, the, the same way that you would uh, hire NPCs in the game, which obviously isn't there yet, but uh, through some sort of recruitment agency, uh, maybe if you're looking to be a crewmate on somebody's ship, you can go in and apply, put your, um, your information in, and then you can get hired alongside of any other NPCs or you know, that's part of the, the networking and social aspect, too, of the game, right? We want people to engage with each other and like, oh, hey, you did a really good job, you know, hauling my stuff from here to there or, or providing this escort service. Like, do you want to, you know, we're running a big ship. Do you want to be a part of it? Like, that's, um, it could absolutely be in, uh, looked at as kind of the proving grounds of like, yeah, this is what I'm capable of. And, and maybe that's how you get hired into some of these bigger organizations or, or something. But uh, it definitely wasn't intended for, you know, this is how I'm going to, you know, staff hire a crew member. Yeah, like staff my ship up. Um, there, there's, they're talking about some other mechanisms of how you're going to hire crew members uh, with the capital ship gameplay uh, team and the, and the multi-crew team. Yeah, yeah. and uh, additionally, there's work going on right now actually on, on the party system in LA. And so that's another way that you can get players together um, and they can do things like potentially start doing missions together, maybe even service beacon contracts. I don't know, it's, it's still in development. Yeah. We're still thinking about what all of it means, but I think the service beacons will be a good way to put like players like together and then you'll have experiences and maybe you'll have a really good experience with someone. And then you'll say, let's actually get in a party together and let's go multi-crew and go do this mission or go do something else. And now we have this like more permanent relationship. So the service beacon is a contract that has like a duration and a satisfied, satisfaction, satisf you, it gets satisfied. Um, but then, when you, if you want to have something that's a little bit longer lasting, maybe you join a party, and then maybe that gets you know bigger, and you start an org, or something like that. So, it's, it's the service beacons won't solve all these problems, but I think it'll be an important part to make it all come together. It, it, it's the way we introduce meet cute to the Star Citizen <laughs> universe. It, 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 it's right. how you're gonna meet people, right? All right. Uh, will we be able? Will we eventually be able to write or add our own text to the service beacon to describe the mission I'm offering in greater detail with some personalized background? That's a double-edged sword right there. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, it's not currently being talked about, but it, it's been talked about 
in the past. Like it's not currently part of, of the end goal. Um, just for the sake of trying to keep the universe a little clean for, for some of the kids out there. Um, that, that just opens up a real Pandora's box of expletives and, and things like that to be you know, thrown into tax yeah. boxes. Uh, so yeah. it, it, I, I, I can already see a number of challenges there. One, <laughs> one, it, one it's a localization issue. Oh, yeah, certainly. It, it's yep. a localization. Yep. Two, uh, I, you said earlier in this show, uh, you want the service beacons from players to look just like the service beacons from NPCs and stuff like that. So the very first line in any custom field is going to be, this is a player request. In cap, that will be the first line in every single, you know, to help folks determine whether this is a player. It, it, it allows folks to bypass that that effort that we're trying to do to make the to make everybody you know seem like they're all like they're all one. So, yeah, a, yeah. a couple things there. Like uh, one, funnily enough, um, we actually had a bug at one point that you could actually type into the the money <laughs> thing. So like it, it actually existed at a point in time, kind of that you could do this. Mm -hmm. And so, but we, we fixed that. Um, also, I, I worked on Elder Scrolls Online and um, that you could do like email and stuff like that, not email, but mail, you can message other players. And the, the file where you filtered out language was one of the like most offensive things like in the world. It's, yeah. yeah, just yeah. imagine like what, all the, the bad things in the world all in one file to try to filter out language. Yep. <laughs> yep. So it's not us saying that it won't ever happen. It's just, yeah. it's, it, it, it's us saying it's still under discussion, it's still under review. It has to be, it has to be thought through and put it done into just right. The file. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see, what else do we got from the live chat? We are moving through these questions. Tyler, I need more questions. Uh, let's see, will you be able to launch a quote unquote, please help me, I'm being attacked right now in the middle of being attacked, you know, while you're, while you're busy trying not to get blown up. You know, is, is there gonna be some kind of shorthand so you don't have to go doot, doot, while you're funny, flying your ship? You that. Doot. Yeah, that's actually one of our, our things that we're working on actively. Um, that I'm in the middle of writing up those conditions exactly. Uh, how, do we, how do we do our distress call? That's kind of like the Hail Mary, you know, I, I don't have time to go into my Moby Glass. I'm piloting my ship. So how can we either put it on a, like a quick button on the comm screen on your MFD or just have a hotkey that's like, you know, I need help. Here's my, here's my SOS. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe like, so. a, like a macro to a yes. macro key to just one specific, yep. you know, type of type of help. I suck. Come help. Yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about like possibly having a concept of like, uh, a template or like a, a highlighted beacon contract um, with all the parameters filled out so that maybe you could hit the key and that gets filled out and, and sent off and maybe it has a price or not, it's kind of up to you. And then, you know, you can let the players respond to it. And th the thing I really like about this is um, I, I like the feature a lot and it's similar to things, other, other features in the game. I would like to see things where Moby Glass is, is always there to give you all the full power that you want but it's not a requirement to engage in yeah. the feature. So I, I really like the fact that we got acceptance of service beacons to work without opening Moby Glass. And it's cool that this is now we can do the full loop completely without opening Moby Glass. You can fire it off, someone else can accept it. You can go land, do the thing and it works. But if you want to get like really um, specific about tweaking it to however you want, you can do that as well. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, do, uh, where was it here? Uh, there, there have been a couple questions uh, from the, th these came mostly from the thread we put up yesterday about pirates, about pirates and how pirates would use the, the, the service beacon. Now, one of the questions flat out said, will pirates be allowed to use the service beacon? And it, I, th I think the misnomer there is that a pirate is like a, like a faction in the game. Like, like when you create your character, am I creating law-abiding citizen or am I creating you know, a, pirate, a pirate citizen? There, there, there's, there's nothing that would outright prevent any citizen from participating in the service beacon system. Uh, once we implement the tattoo filtering, then maybe, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, there's, it's not like that. I mean, perhaps some of the details that are in, in the filtering options will naturally filter out some of those people that you would call a pirate. Um, but certainly it's, it's, it's not going to be like, oh, pirate, no. Yeah. 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 Never, it'll never be explicitly shut off from you, but right. you may not see certain beacons or whatever because your yeah. reputation is so low. Because you blow everyone up, you can fly upon. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I, th I think some of that gets handled by the by the uh, reputation filter and stuff like that. But I I, I think you know it's it's it, it, it's there. Has, there will, again, this is a system that you know you have to develop how things are supposed to work before you start developing you know how how it can be abused and whatnot. But you know I I I, I think I think pirates have to have you know, some ability to, to see, even if, the, even if you put a filter that doesn't allow somebody below mm -hmm. four stars to do it, I think you still have to be able to see that something's out there. And like, even though, oh, they've got a, I've got a, I've got a one star rating and they won't let me, they won't let me accept it. They won't let me, but I, but I can see from the thing that there's some, there's somebody out there. I know there's blood in the water. Right. Yeah. So, you know, they, they can go. <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be an interesting balance that, mm -hmm. that uh, challenge. Yeah. Well, we don't want the system to be is you know like right now you can we we put up nav markers so you can get to the other person. Um, we we talked about the fact that people are going to accept a mission, get the nav marker, and then come out and then drop the mission, and then they're right there, right? It's so uh, the this is all just part of the the gameplay and and you know what you expose yourself to is like if I ask for help, I could get this. Is it worth it? And then so I'm going to offer. You know, uh, enough of money to attract somebody who's really good at it, or who's um, who's in the reputation range that you know is is mostly reliable, uh, or you know that just goes. But you want anybody to answer? Here you go. Like that's you're gonna get what you pay for. So that's that's a again, it's just a choice, and it's part of the dynamic, you know, universe that um, we, we just don't want it to be like a tracking system, though, right? It's like that. That's certainly not what it's intended for, but. Um, we, we do want the idea that, yeah, you know, sometimes people set traps and players are going to do it. And when NPCs can be involved with the universe, that's, that's already like a, a mission, right? An, an ECM mission where, um, you can get ambushed by a pirate somewhere, you know, you get pulled out of quantum travel or, or, you know, you're just flying around and guess what? There's pirates. Um, so that's, that's definitely something that's part of the game. And again, it's, it's doesn't matter if it's a player or an NPC. It's it's a fact of the universe. So, yeah. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, 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 like bounty hunting missions? Uh, you know, be, being able to place bounties. We got a couple questions about about using service beacons to say, you know, this guy's a, a pain in my butt. He, he, he robbed me or whatever, and yeah. placing a bounty on, on Michael. And I'm using Michael for the example. I think we all know why I'm using Michael for the example. It, it's fair. I don't you have want to, him dead. I don't yeah. have to explain yeah. it. Um, what are our thoughts about the, uh, the future of, 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 that, of, that, of that system? I mean, are, uh, how, how much trouble are we going to be able to cause for Michael through, through putting bounties? So um, a couple things there. One, uh, bounties are certainly something that we have uh, talked about. Um, I think in more likely in the nearer term, uh, assassination is, is, is yeah. effectively the, the same thing. But the, the key thing about this is that assassination, you have no guarantees about the ramifications of what you've requested. So if I ask you to kill somebody and then you kill them, then if it was out in a place where you're going to get some criminal rating for it, you'll get the criminal rating and I'll get the criminal rating for it. So it's, there's, there's going to be repercussions for the actions. You can do it. But that doesn't mean you don't, there's not repercussion. Bounty, yep. on the other hand, importantly, uh, is going to be through the legal channels. And so, therefore, we, it will allow to say, okay, the whatever, you see, somebody has mandated that this person has broken the law. And so, therefore, killing them is actually not only legal, but you'll get paid for it. So, <laughs> like... The there's, best kind of legal. Yes, yeah, the best kind of legal. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, think, I think they're both interesting and useful. Um, but I think assassination will come first because it's it's less yeah. complicated. Yeah, it's we, easy. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, that's definitely the easier of the two because the the bounty system implies a certain uh, sophistication of the criminal system yeah. that w we don't currently have. So as we evolve the criminal system, uh, get more of those rules in place, then all of a sudden, what you do that warrants a bounty uh, will become more and more detailed and and understood by the game and that will allow us to then okay well yeah this guy stole some goods so he he stole some things and i'm going to put a bounty on him for this and there you go cool and then guess what when you right now we've got all of our different servers you know we don't have the server mesh up and running so when you leave server a and go to server b that bounty is or assassination contract is going to follow you wherever you go so um you know, there. <laughs> I think that's going to be a really cool element uh, to to that kind of contract. Yeah, 
I want to I uh, emphasize something. Uh, we, we, talked, we started talking about banities, and we went to talking about assassinations. Yes. As has been discussed a, a number of times over the last two years, actually, uh, assassination is the has been our intention, the very first version of, of, that, of that type of bounty system. But uh, Chris has maintained for years that, yes, we want a fully featured yeah. bounty hunting system where you'll be able to capture. And that's what the, 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 the pods in the Avenger yeah. are for and stuff like that. So, so I, just, I don't want anybody to be discouraged when, when the first version of this comes and it's just, oh, it's just kill people. That's not, you know, it, it's we are building this game out live in front of everybody. And you start, you, you, you have to start somewhere. And that is the start of that system. Yeah, assassination so. would be just like the first step to setting such a system yeah. up. I mean, it, it's the wanted dead part of wanted dead or alive. Exactly. It's the reason yeah. it comes first. Yes. It's much we easier to kill part. something than keep it alive. So yeah, we, we do the dead <laughs> part first and then we develop the alive part after that. Um, here's an interesting question. Uh, Will we be able to mask our name in a service beacon? Now, like allowing for the star rating, you know, so people can still see, you know, this is a mission from a two or three star person. But will we be able to submit anonymous service beacons? Uh, that hasn't been talked about. Um, that that implies some some devious nature, I think, uh, <laughs> by, by the person setting up the beacon. Uh -huh. But. Um, yeah, that's a that's a good question. I, I think that's something for us to, to talk about because yeah. um, we, we certainly haven't talked about it. And our our mission text, like I don't know if anybody's even read the mission text or the objective text for the service beacons, but we actually insert the name of the person or the destination, you know, dynamically into the to the text. So um, it would have to, you know, yeah, I mean, be incorporated in a system as well. But I mean, I, interesting. I, 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 I can see some virtues in it. You know, you don't, you'd never want to hire, you know, hide the star rating. So that, that's, that's the purpose of that thing, I guess. But, you know, if you're somebody trying to play both sides of the law or you're, you're generally a law-abiding citizen, but, you know, it's like, man, I really need this thing. And the, the, the only place it's available right now are in, are in non-UEE spaces, you know, this because the economy is shifted. It's like, but I don't want to get blamed for, for being the contraband. So I will offer, you know, 10 times the amount that it would normally cost to keep my, to, to keep my uh, the identity hidden. And it protects me, but it's a greater risk, you know, for mm -hmm. the player who, who assumes it. But, you know, but a greater risk comes with a greater reward. Sure. And stuff. So, so I can see some virtues in it, but it'll definitely be, again, not committing to it. You know, we're just yeah, maybe, maybe we just need some sort of uh, alias system that allows people to post things as their alias or, uh, or as their real well, name. Well, Chris has talked about this. This is even farther ahead than you guys, but Chris has talked about for a number of years the ability to, to – alter your identity in, 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 at times, you know, mm -hmm. to, to, if you, if you do generate a criminal record, that's, that's so severe you to be able to go through a process, a very arduous process, not yeah. an easy process by any means, but a process to, to wipe your record clean, a, a more involved version of the, the station at Korea that yeah. lets you just clear your, just your wanted kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, you have to build how things are supposed to work before you start building how you're going to circumvent it. So that's still a ways, a ways out, but uh, there are a lot of, a lot of exciting considerations to this. Um, yeah, we talked a lot about identity spoofing as well. You know, just being able to, uh, for a limited time or, or something, show a fake name above your head or, uh, you know, go by, by an assumed name um, for the purposes of getting into a highly secured area or bypassing customs or, or something yeah. like that um, because you're a wanted person. So it's it's things that, that we've talked about is just how do we apply it to the service beacon hasn't really been discussed yet. Okay. So we're down to our last question mm -hmm. the show. Awesome. So yeah, yeah, no, it, it, everybody always freaks out. Everybody's like, oh, Jared, I want to do this. It's Friday. It's, uh. I'm like, it goes fast, I promise. Uh, what do you think about the possibility of allowing service beacons that multiple people can accept? That is something that we have definitely talked about. <laughs> um, <clears throat> There's a little bit of tech that needs to be developed to get that to work, but uh, it's not insurmountable at all. And certainly th things like the assassination contract uh, warrant it. So if I put out a contract on Michael's head, because we all apparently agree that yes. he should die. It'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's not just that one person is going to potentially kill him. You know, there's a race there. So multiple people could accept the contract. And, and now, you know, time is of the essence. So I, I, that is definitely something we've been talking about, and there will be real work for it. Yeah, I think so. Gotcha. So yeah. 
the service beacon system. I mean, it, it may not have the flashiest name. It may not have the, 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 the sexiest name, but I don't think it can be understated just how important and vital this system is to the future of Star Citizen. Uh, I mean, it, it, it is, it, it, you know, when we're sitting here, we're talk, we talk about building the living, breathing universe. Uh, it's the, 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 the biggest way we're going to do that is, is, is through you guys and the use of, of the services. We provide you the tools and you guys will make this into something far more than we could ever intend. It's, it's an incredibly exciting system. And I've been chomping at the bit to, to yeah, like get the ATV segment out so that we can do this because <laughs> this is the, the, this, the system is, is so much of what I think most of us have been waiting for. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. It's the beginning of a, a really cool thing, I think. And, and it's really no end to the amount of content that we can provide in terms of the types of beacons. It's just, you know, as we get new game rules in place, uh, great, here's another option for a different beacon type or a different contract type. So I, I, you're going to see a lot more of this as we go on. And, and as the game evolves, it's it's just going to be part of, you know, the, the overall game and how you play it. Yep. So it's exciting. It is. It's very exciting. So. Uh, for Chad McKinney, for Rob, uh, Michael Dillon, and for Rob Reiniger, uh, thank you so much for joining us on today's show about the service begins. We're going to take a short break, play another video from our community, and when we we're back, we'll do the wrap-up. Stay tuned. How will you use your gifts? What choices will you make? Will inertia be your guide, or will you follow your passions? Will you follow dogma, or will you be original? Will you choose a life of ease, or a life of service and adventure? Wilt under criticism, or will you follow your convictions? Will you play it safe, or will you be a little bit swashbuckling? When it's tough, will you give up, or will you be relentless? Another great video. Uh, it was a little loud. It was a little, little loud. <laughs> well, that about wraps up this week's show. A special thanks again to Rob Reiniger and Austin, Chad McKinney, and Michael Dillon right here next to me while I uh, do this uh, wrap-up here. Some housekeeping before we let you go. The Hercules Starlifter promotion opened for everyone today. It did go live during the show. Stats! brochures, the Q&A post. It all, sit, it all hits the ground today. If, so, you know, check that out on the robertspaceindustries.com website. And CitizenCon. There are still CitizenCon tickets available for this year's event in Austin, Texas, which promises to be the biggest and grandest gathering of star citizens yet. Don't miss out on your chance to meet Chris Roberts, Aaron Roberts, and an entire host of developers from all over the world as we explore the future of star citizens' continuing development. You can find tickets available on that very same robertspaceindustries.com website. Just bookmark the website. Then on Monday, come right back here for another brand new episode of Calling All Devs, this time with questions on uh, radar ranges, uh, cargo capacities, voice-activated commands, and more. Calling All Devs. It's what's for Mondays. <laughs> so for Reverse the Verse Live, I'm content manager for global video production, Jared Huckabee. We'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows 
And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching.